Hello everyone, welcome in to Crochet Life and Stuff with Deborah Presents Book Look. Yes, let's take a look at a crochet book um, that th in this case I have picked up used. I got it at a place called Abe Books Online, not affiliated or anything, but that is just where I get a lot of my used books because they have used books of any sort of genre, including crochet. So here we go. Looks like this one probably used to be a library book. <laughs> a handy guide with all the answers. Everything the internet didn't teach you about crochet. Complete tool guide, step-by-step -step instructions, learning about gauge, and plus easy beginner projects. This is by Jean Leinhauser and Rita Weiss. And uh, oh yeah, this was part of a public library. And this is the last time this was stamped was July 21st, 2015. Now I'm curious to know when this actually came out. This was in Illinois. So if you are familiar with that library there, hi to you. Um, book actually uh, 2013 was when the copyright was from Leisure Arts. There's a nice introduction. Table of contents. Tools, yarn, the importance of gauge, as much as some of us hate it. Reading a pattern, working a pattern, making fringe and tassels, refresher course in crochet, and an index. And it does tell you about tools, about what the different yarn hooks are, the different parts of the yarn hook and what they're called. Some of the different types of hooks out there. I love this vintage hook. What does that even mean? Japanese hook. I didn't know that was a Japanese hook. Wood hook, metal hook, and plastic hook. You know, plus we all know the other hooks around as well. The difference between inline and shaped. This is always handy to have the yarn hook conversion chart because in the U.S. for some reason we've got these letters and numbers. For instance, a J hook is a size 10 hook in the US. A little glare there, sorry. But UK and Canadian, it'd be a, a number four hook, but it is a six millimeter hook. Y'all, can we all just go metric already? Oops, sorry about the big old bump there. Just go metric. It makes it a lot easier. At least it does for me. Because I know a lot of the hooks that I have, I got online um, at like wish.com or places like that. And they just come with just the metric markings on there. So yes, please, metric. Other crochet tools, including a yarn needles, tape measure, hook gauge, tapered slot hook gauge. Okay, I've never seen one of those. That is interesting. I guess you slide your the shank of your hook down in there and see what the actual size is. That's cool. And here's some other stuff. A yarn cutter, which I have seen those. Scissors, which, yeah. Tunisian crochet hook, broomstick lace handle, hmm, and a hairpin lace loom. So those are things I'm not very familiar with, but it does tell you about what they are. And then yarn. We all know about yarn. We love our yarn. Different weight classifications and what they mean and what they might be used for. Oh, I kind of love that. Sock, explaining sock, explaining sport, baby, DK, light worsted, worsted, Afghan, or Aran. Um, a tip about what it means when somebody says four ply, which is something different. Chunky craft or rug. See, all these yarns have all these different names, bulky and, and roving, which is not the same as, well, roving can mean something else too. Um, but there is a complete craft yarn council chart for the standard yarn weight system, which lists all the categories and gives recommended hooks on page 96. That is awesome. And this is giving some examples of some crocheted up samples with different yarn weights and different yarn hooks and their relative sizes on there. I like that. That That's pretty clever and it kind of gives you an eye of what it's for. Um, tells you about different fibers, just kind of an overview of some different fibers. Bamboo, cashmere, cotton, linen, microfibers, mohair, nylon, polyester, rayon, silk, soy, wool, merino wool choosing your yarn and what it means on the ball band and it also has a place to describe what all of these symbols mean pages 33 to 36. so yeah just different bits and pieces about what these things mean what the different symbols mean machine wash different temperatures um delicate or gentle boy it really gives you specifics hand wash 
do not tumble dry, which, you know, if you're using an acrylic yarn, just don't. Um, about ironing and do not iron and different dry cleaning solvents or do not dry clean. The importance of gauge. Should I just skip this section? <laughs> we all know. I mean, do you do gauge swatches? I can tell you that I've never actually done one properly. Yeah, I'm a bad, bad girl. Uh, reading a pattern, explain some of that shorthand and how things are worked up and what they mean. Also skill levels and, and what it generally means with different things, beginner, easy, intermediate, or experienced. Some standard abbreviations, a continuation, because there are a ton of them. Some symbols of what it means, an asterisk, the dagger, the colon, and them telling you what to do before and after, like that. Working a pattern, how to translate the pattern, and also it says if you've never worked a published pattern before, you might want to start with the easier ones, the fabulous face cloth, face cloth, wow, or the delightful dish cloth before attempting the scarf on page 60. So it does give you like something like this, the fabulous face cloth, and it has you, I mean, yes, if you've been crocheting a while, you can probably look at that and go, oh yeah, I can just kind of whip that up. But for somebody like me who does have a struggle with reading patterns and kind of making what, what's mentioned in the pattern happen on my hook, this might be good because it really is telling you, here's the translation of the pattern. Here's the pattern and the purple is what they're telling you what it means when they're saying this stuff in the pattern. I like this. Oh, I don't know why I've never looked at this. I've actually had this for a bit. I got this at the used book, the A books. I think I paid two bucks for it or less. But it goes through that entire pattern and the delightful dishcloth, which does pretty much the same thing, but it's a totally different sort of a stitch pattern on there, explaining what each bit and bob in this pattern means. And then that goes on to the scarf all right. Again, explaining everything. Well, if I had everything explaining everything on all the patterns I looked at, that would make my life so much easier. Making fringe and tassels, and there are a blue billion ways to do things. This is their way of doing it. Refresher course in crochet. If you have forgotten how to hold your hook, how to do a slip knot, um, how to do any of these things, a chain, they're in here in this book with some pretty good illustrations trying to tell you how to do it. So yeah, it also tells you um, about crocheting in round, crocheting circles, decreasing, increasing. So yeah, a lot of good information in this little book, how to seam things together, weaving in your ends, and the index. You know me, I've said it before, I like a good index. So there's not a ton in this index, but Table of Contacts really covered everything in this little book. So they, they give you where they've shown you half double crochet, where they've shown you triple crochet and stuff like that. And all of these, by the way, are in American terms. Um, here is that standard yarn weight guide there, telling you about gauge and what they mean and all of that stuff. And then the back. Um, yeah, I think this pretty much is what it sets out to be. Now, originally, this was $9.99 US, $11.99 Canadian. Like I said, I paid a couple of bucks for it um, in the used book scene. But don't overlook the books with the basics. This is a leisure arts publication. And I think you may still be able to find a version of this at Walmart and stuff. I'm pretty sure that I've seen something like this there, but I'm always glad to find it at a bargain because I love me a bargain. Uh, what do you think about these super basic crochet examples here and, and the sort of, yes, this is for a beginner or somebody who has not had a ton of experience crocheting, but some of it could also be useful for you if you, it's just something you're not familiar with. I like it. I thought it was a good deal. I still think it's a good deal, even though it came from a public library originally when they, they purged their their uh, collection there. All right, that has been this week's book look with a little fun book. Please uh, leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you think. Let me know if there's a book that you'd like me to take a look at. If I can find it and acquire it, we'll take a look. Um, so maybe you'll get an idea of it before you go out and purchase said book. 
Thanks for coming by. I'd love if you hit that like button on your way out. If you're not subscribed, please consider doing so. Please check my description box down below. Always lots of interesting tidbits and information down there as well. And uh, I will see you soon. Bye, y'all.